Hello, hello, hello everyone, NecroVMX here, and welcome back with more Dragon Quest VIII, and we're, we're pretty much at the end of the game. Um, but we have still some alchemy to do, so before we go up to fight uh, Rapthorn, we want to get the last bits of... Uh... Oh, my, is my controller not plugged in? Oh, there we go, it just wasn't turned on. Um, the last bits of... Uh... alchemy done. I think I have something in there now. Let's make sure. Which means that I'm probably just going to go to Slime Hill and run around in high speed. Okay. Because then I at least can gain more experience points from occasionally killing uh, metal slimes and whatnot. Whoa, I thought I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> so let's uh, I guess zoom over to yeah, right on this tower would be good. Do that or Gutsk, whatever, which, whichever way, right? Also, I am streaming to the Discord, so it is possible we may have somebody suddenly join us, but I don't have stream remote on, so I'll hear the bloop telling me that they arrived instead of me being scared witless. Oh, I'm, I'm in the wrong tab. Alright. Uh, See, so we have all the orbs. They're all carrying their scepters. And that's Bomberin's Bell. Where's the soul stone? There it is. Yeah, we, we still have stuff to make. So I'll just, you know, put it in turbo, run around. Uh, where is... There it is. Run around here. Hopefully it won't take too long. Okay, so we had somebody just join us, and it's Alice. How are you doing, Alice? Can you say it again? Are you were... Uh, I'm alright, how are you? Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, you were very low at first. We're just doing the... I'm doing good. I'm just doing the last last minute preparations. But just, basically, I'm just letting my uh, alchemy finish, you know? Yeah, I saw the... Your message. And they're gone. Okay. It must have been a... Huh, bit of a... There we go. I don't often run into dark slimes here. It must have been the, uh, there, there you are, Alice. As I said, it must have been a technical issue there. Yeah, I had the update. Oh, yeah, wow, well, yeah, Discord has pretty frequent updates. You see that little green arrow there. You know it's time to update. So hopefully I can get all the recipes done in one video, and then we can head over to, uh, fight Rapthorn. In the next one. Of course, there's going to be the post-game. We have to do the uh, the Dra Dragovian path, the true ending, all that stuff. So, <laughs> I'm only bothering to fight metal slimes because yeah, you need a lot of experience for the. Uh, a Govian path, although I'm pretty pretty high level, I think. So we we watched that Children of Men yesterday. I was actually surprised not to see you there, Alice. I'm just going tired. Oh, I got you. Yeah, I know how that is. It was good, although I probably wouldn't want to choose to watch it again. Yeah, I did. Also, was it to say that dark? Yeah. Well, not only that, but I, we, we we kind of found out right after the movie through something that Eb mentioned. And then I looked into it in that the director, Alfonso Poron, is a gigantic piece of shit. Like, way worse than I thought. Why am I running into saber cats here? What the fuck? Does Evie mention that... Oh, I guess I'm fighting them. He directed this really cringy PSA for Autism Speaks. Called, uh, I Am Autism. You know, I was like, well, maybe he didn't know that Autism Speaks is awful and whatnot, but apparently this, this PSA is so terrible that, like, I looked it up, and it has, like, a 1.1 1 .1 out of 10 on IMDb. That PSA is not really good. I, I guess. So, and I looked into it, and he's, like, a staunch supporter of Autism Speaks, and uh, he has an autistic son who he says is getting over his condition. 
yeah, big oof, right? And then the more I looked into it, like, he was defending Roman Polanski, you know, like, uh, yeah, everything I looked into, he called it the, works. he called, yeah, he called the, uh, the trial against Roman Polanski a moral panic. It's a moral panic that he got away with. It's, not everything that's a moral panic is bad, you know? Like, I think, I think... That kind of thing is, you know, you should be against that, but I don't know. Hey, Ross. Hey, what's up, Chris? So I was just like, you know, at the end of the movie, I'm like, you know, between this and Gravity, we can forget that he directed a Harry Potter, right? And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, this is such a good movie, you know? And then Evie brought out that, and then when I Googled it, I was like, oh my god, the, the deeper I go down the rabbit hole, the worse he is. Who are you talking about? Um, Alfonso Cuaron. He's a autism speak supporter, and he like um, he was supporting uh, Roman Polanski. Oh boy! Yeah, just, like the more I, I I stopped reading it after a while, because the more I read, the worse it got. And I'm like, God damn! And I loved Gravity, you know, such a good film. But and his his son is autistic, and he's just like, oh, it's a terrible disease. It it works faster than AIDS and cancer. I don't know what that means. Works faster. And but he's getting, but he's getting over it. What's his exact words? He's getting disease, over. Jeez, it. it's something you're. Born yeah, it's a, with. yeah, it's a condition. It's 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 the way you are. It's you're wired differently, and and that that, that doesn't mean you're. It's a bad thing. It just means that adjustments need to be made. You know, and not all of them by the person. Sometimes other people have to make adjustments. But it, it just got worse and worse, and then we realized that there was like an autistic kid in the movie, and his father was treating him like shit. And we're like, wow, you know? They like th the more I read about Alfonso Cuarón, I'm like, damn. And I like I like his films, but he sounds like an asshole. And his son is, because there was some confusion, because he has a few children, right? And E. B. said something like, oh, his son's a director as well. And I'm like, well, this said the kid the kid's only 18, so maybe another he has another son that's a director. And then I found out that, no, his 18-year-old son is and has been a director for some time. And I'm like, an 18-year-old movie director? He's autistic. You know, like, come on. He's going to say he got over it? It sounds like he didn't get over it. He just has a, a healthy outlet. I did. I did mostly enjoy the movie, although it was a it was a tough it was a tough watch at times. That Clive Owen is a great actor. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> so how are you doing, Ross? I'm doing okay. That's good to hear. You know, to, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I got some uh, lamps earlier, you know, ce you know, ceiling lights. Yeah. And some of them, you know, they have these. Uh, I don't know what to call them, like extension doohickeys that you just kind of screw together to your desired length as to how far they hang from the ceiling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the suspension uh, wire. Okay. Yeah. So, the ones I got. The uh, suspension rods are uh, too long, like way too long. Like even if I just use one, you the don't, ceiling light just hangs down too yeah. far. You don't want to bang your head on it. No. So I uh, measured it and uh, 3D printed some uh, very shorter versions, which are pretty much the perfect length. Nice. That 3D printer sure comes in handy, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> Took about an hour and a half to make them, but I got them. Well, that honestly sounds like a short amount of time. I thought 3D printing took forever. I thought it was like something you had to leave on for a day. Uh, it can. It just depends on the size of the prints. Like, uh, for instance, I'm, I'm, the, uh, <laughs> I'm the Soul Reaver, the replica <laughs> of the Soul Reaver that I'm uh, printing out. Um, the sub assemblies, they take like 10, 12 hours. Uh, I'm sorry, I, if you heard me laugh at it, you know, people who watch the video will understand. You're talking, and I'm nodding like you can fucking see me. <laughs> I just realized, I caught myself like, why am I nodding? He can't see me. Uh, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, 
Oh, man. And, and I just gotta spray paint them black since they're just this bone color. Right before this, I was, uh, oh god, we finally fixed the dishwasher. We got this new dishwasher when the old one broke, and if you remember, that was like a year and a half ago, right? The old one started really, it was loud, it was stinky, it was uh, spewing water all over the floor, so we bought a new water wash, uh, washing machine, uh, we bought a new dishwasher, right? And the damn thing was never secured properly. The, the kid from Home Depot, or whatever the fuck it was, that installed it, gave some excuse at why it was jutting out and rocking. He says, oh, well, the floor is uneven, which it's it's not, you know. And then we had some, you know, we bought these, like, bracket things that are supposed to keep it in place and that you glue to the bottom of the uh, countertop. And the glue just came off after a while because it's constantly, like, rocking. And then we had a plumber come in, and this was expensive, you know. Thankfully, he was also here for something else something with the sink because we had the sink problems on uh, that were pretty major, but uh, it, it he glued it on more properly, and it stayed for a while. But more recently, it's it, it just you know it just comes loose after a while. So we we got this like other bracket that is supposed to work in tandem with the ones we had, and oh my god! So we're you know I'm trying to read the instructions and do it properly, and, and my mom she's just like she just goes you know and. She, you know, you have to bend the ends in the right way, and, you know, and she's telling me, oh, bend it this way, and I do it, and then I'm like, honestly, I think it has to go the other way, and that was a whole thing. And it turns out I was right. Man, don't read the instructions. I do nothing but read the instructions. I follow the instructions, and it comes out perfectly, right? But the problem was these, this wasn't bought from, like, Home Depot or something. This was from, like, some person that makes it online, right? Like, their, their online store. So, the instructions had these really crappy, low-quality, low-res pictures that were in black and white. And it was honestly hard to tell which side was up in the picture. <laughs> and it looked like the way my mom said. But then I said, that doesn't make sense. It won't fit if we do it that way. So anyway, we eventually get it in there. But then we have to screw it into the wood, right? On the sides. And... My mother, she goes through all this trouble to get her drill out and to charge it, and then decides that she's not going to use it. <laughs> no, I'm just going to use a screwdriver and just drill it right into, the, you know, with, with, by hand, right? Well, sometimes you might need to do that, yeah. unless you split the wood, but still, yeah. Well, that's, from. that's what happened. That's what happened. Because I, you know, I did one side, and then she did the other, and then we realized that my side was in the right spot, but her side was a little too low. It, and uh, it was lopsided and the thing wouldn't close, right? So she's like, oh, no big deal. We'll just take it out, move it up, and then drill new holes. And I'm like, I think their holes are going to be too close together and you're just going to split the wood. And that's what, and she's like, no, it'll be fine. And then, of course, the wood starts splitting a half, you know, it was a whole thing. And so we had to, so I actually pushed the, dry, the thing back so that we can go deeper, which actually worked out really well. And we got it in there, but it took like two hours, and oh my god, <laughs> I'm done with that right now. But it's it's really in there secure at least. You could, you could walk, you could walk by without hitting the handle. Boy, this particular recipe seems to be taking a long time, and I'm gonna check in case it pinged and I didn't hear it. <laughs> yeah, it's almost there. It's it's going insane. All right. <sighs> One time I, I looked because I was like, damn, it got to be about time. And it, I said, oh, probably just a little bit more. And I took like one step and I hear, bing. Where was that? <laughs> yeah, you were there and EB was there for that, right? I think it was just before you came in. It was, it was funny, though. I don't know why I'm suddenly getting sa saber cats here. And dark slimes weren't present before, but whatever, I don't care. Oh, I shouldn't be using Sandman's arrow. That was the wrong thing. Whatever, I got it. Another thing that works real nice about these uh, suspension rods I 3D printed, uh, they are just the exact right uh, width and thickness of the walls. 
of the interior walls of them that they can actually screw into uh, what's already there. And it'll even cut threads into the plastic, which is good. Oh, well, that's good. I mean, that's a, you know, oh, there it goes. That, that's kind of the thing, like, we had to screw it into what was there, but kind of in the wrong spot at first. All right, so let's see. I don't remember what I put in here. Oh, looks like headgear and, I don't know. Let's see what I got. Phantom mask, okay. All right, so next I need to stick a bastard sword in there. He doesn't know his father do this. You god dang bastard. As far as butane. <laughs> My dad says butane's a bastard gas. There's a bastard sword. And I need another icicle dirk. Uh, there it is. And the last thing is actually going to be a cold cheese. And there we go. Cheese. Put these two, uh... Yeah, because there's, like, spicy cheese and cold cheese that you can oh, make. I yeah. I think... I, I guess it's minty? Somehow? I don't know. But you feed it to the, the, the little mouse character in battle, and he, like, breathes fire or ice or whatever effect the cheese has. You know. We might, I might just make this episode as long as it needs to be, because, like... I'm like, damn, 16 minutes in and I've got exactly one recipe complete. And that's with Turbo on. <laughs> I mean, stopping to fight enemies is uh, slows you down, but... I don't know why I have difficulties running away from Dark Slimes, but whatever, we'll fight them. Oh, uh, where are you going, fool? Goo your ass over here! Yeah. You came with the wrong hood. Yeah. And, uh... I gotta open up the PC and clean it out. I mean, it's not really dirty in there, but I wanted to make sure that I get the GPU fans really clean as possible after the issue I had. But, you know, the wildest thing? I haven't had that issue at all since that day. It, it, like the temperatures have been good. It, it's been spinning steadily. I did set it to uh, spin at the two side fans to spin at a consistent rate, while the middle one is adaptive. That's a good thing. Spin everybody anyway. Yeah. I don't know. It never, it never goes above like 60 degrees Celsius. And that's at heavy load, you know? Like, it was up to 60 when I was, like, doing, like, Horizon Zero Dawn, you know? But I ordered the physical edition of Fork 5. Oh, that's, that's, what's okay. oh, that's cool. Hey. Been... They were saying that, um, as I was reading reviews of it, that with the modern twin stick controls, it, it's like a dream. I can't wait to play it. Although I still just want to kind of, like, for the, to do the trilogy on on Twitch, I want to just, like, do the Wii version so that I can use that mod that lets me use a mouse and keyboard. Mm. And Jessica's level 4. I mean, mouse and keyboard is a dream for first-person games, so I'd love to play all three games like that. Jessica got Mar Magic Barrier. Okay. Yeah, but I still want to show Nintendo that I support the Mantras. No, of course. Because, you know, You want them to make more Metroid. Yeah. I mean, in my case, I wouldn't have any way to play the damn actual Switch cartridge. But, you know. I've also been rewatching this show that he's got a channel called Wife Catch People. Got him. It's kind of corny, but it's an endearing way. Last three days of work have been pretty much all training. Like, uh,. I don't know how much you know. Well, you don't, but uh, it was mostly just for agile scrum team training, that sort of thing. Like uh, just making sure we can just do our jobs the best we can. It's like a like an in-service kind of thing. Yes, I had to be in the office, but thankfully it was very nicely catered, and everything went actually very, very well. I always hated going to in-services, and it felt like the. Damn, I'm just here for the catering. <laughs> <laughs> well, the catering was very nice, and thankfully I didn't have a whole lot to do uh, outside of that. 
Ooh, okay, now we're talking. I think I might actually make a save state here and make sure we get at least one of these. Night, sleep tight, you white. And Yankus is level 47. Guess I'll put it into science. She. Meow, 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 meow. What'd you say? The decay door of Dragon Quest enemies, the middle slime, the middle slimes. <laughs> I think the less you think about it, the better, right? Yes. Royal Jaws and Girl! That's something they give you by experience instead of demanding long control. I hope they're not made out of, like, mercury or something. You get poisoned just by fighting them. <laughs> Shit. Why do I have a hard time getting away from Dark Slimes? It's so silly. They're not, they're not powerful enemies. Just fight them. Man, it's just their code. Might be. There was a, some weirdness in um, Final Fantasy One, where certain certain enemies or enemy formations were hard coded, where you couldn't run from them. But and a lot of it was, you know, like you're not supposed to be able to run away from bosses, you know. But some of the choices they made were, I'd say, strange. And I'll give you an example. Uh, there is an enemy called a. Winter Wolf or a Frost Wolf, depending on which version you're playing, that you could run from. And there's an enemy called the Ice Giant or, or Ice Gigas that you can run from. But if they're together in the same formation, you can't run. Hmm. Ah, Angela leveled up. I know way too much about the programming of, uh, of uh, Final Fantasy 1. <laughs> it's got probably Mostly because it's just a terribly programmed game and understanding all the glitches is kind of interesting. But... Yeah. Barely hold it together. Yeah. Like, that's my people do you love. remember the uh, the whole Invisible Man thing in Cornelia? Yeah. yeah. So for anybody who doesn't, though, I'll explain it. That, that there, Some people found that there was a spot in the, in the first castle, Corneria, or Cornelia, depending on the translation, that you couldn't walk on, and there was no reason not to. They found that there was actually a person there that you couldn't see, that you could talk to them, and they had dialogue, but that they, uh, they're, they're just, whatever, for whatever reason, they're not visible, so it became known as the Invisible Man glitch. And it turned out that the reason that you couldn't see the character is because they were flagged as being in a room. So whenever you go in a room, the characters that are outside the room become, you know, are, are become invisible, and the characters that are inside the room become visible, and vice versa. And even though this character was not in a room, they were flagged incorrectly. And, um, Jesus, this is taking a while. And basically a person, what they did is they, they went inside of a room and then used a game genie code to walk through the walls without, you know, having to use the door and that they found that all the other NPCs were uh, invisible except for that one who was visible, and it turned out the invisible man was actually an invisible woman. <laughs> but uh, later on, they, you know, the, the later ports fixed it. Eventually, they just, instead of, because they, they fixed it in, like, you know, like the PlayStation version, right? But eventually, they just took that character out of the game completely, for uh, maybe as a joke or something. It's not like they said anything interesting or relevant to the plot. That character was real fun, boss. <laughs> there we go. Real final boss were the enemies we made along the way. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, I think I think this episode's gonna be extra long because I got a lot of alchemy to do and it seems to be taking a while. 
Man, I don't care that much. About metal slimes. Give me liquid metal or liquid or king metal slimes at least. Fuck out of here. Yo, what up, BB? Yo. Hello? Hello? Ah, oh, there you are. There you go. What's up? Uh, not much. Well, a lot, considering I dropped like five changes in general earlier. It wasn't that. It wasn't that much. You're, you're exaggerating. It was all readable. And relevant. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I'm sorry that your arm is bothering you again, though. That sucks. Uh. Yeah, it never really fully went away. There were, like, some days where it felt like it was completely fine. So you feel like you didn't get, like, the full power epidural this time? Yeah. And like I said, they said to call them if it doesn't work. It seems like it isn't working, but they didn't say they'd do anything about it. They said just tell them. Well, they want to know so that they can track the, the progress. And, you know. Yeah. Like, you might need a different dosage or some shit. I would just tell my neurologist that stop referring to me. Stop referring me to them because it doesn't work. Maybe. Oh, here we go. Here's something worth trying. I, all the doctors telling me that I should need to talk to my neurologist again. I'm like, I don't see him again until June. Yeah, you have difficulties getting a timely appointment. Yeah. Pretty well. Nice. God dang, bastard. Vampire survivors added a new level for free up on the DLC. It's called Bat Country. You know what's interesting about that game? Like, I know it's like really fun and everything, but when I look at it, I'm like, aren't there like 50 mobile games that are exactly that? Yeah, it has like a lot of uh, games that are just like it. I mean, hell, uh, VTuber I was watching last night was playing something very similar. It was basically an anime themed version of it. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, man, I feel like I've seen that exact game before. But, you know, just know with different you characters. Complains about it, saying there's better looking versions of it. Yeah. I mean, I guess with a game like that, you, you know what it is? I don't think June really likes that type of game, because I remember back in the day, uh, there was an indie game on Xbox Live Arcade called I Made a Game with Zombies in it. <laughs> and June just hated it hated it. I used to torture her by uh, hey Jim, hey, hey, hey. Welcome to my game! <laughs> <laughs> that stupid fucking song is actually, like, super fucking catchy. That's the... And, and basically, the plot of that was you just outlast the song. <laughs> I made a game with zombies in it, yeah! I was talking earlier because somebody was like, you ever get imposter syndrome but like for playing video games? I was like, hmm. what do you mean? He's like, well, I always think that, you know, I'm playing Elden Ring right now and every time I beat a boss, I think, I'm not actually good at games, I just got lucky. <laughs> and I'm okay. like, I, get I you. spent most of my life telling everybody I absolutely suck at games and then when I list my favorite games they're like those are actually really hard <laughs> I guess we'll try this right, here we go uh -huh. you know I can't wait for armored core 6 but uh it's from saw so it's gonna be very hard and uh yeah I my, my mecha is going to get its shit pushed in for a while. Is Because I've never played Armored Core, and I know it's like, you know, not anything like their Soulsborne games, but is it, is it known for its difficulty? Uh, from what I can remember, there are some missions that can be very easy, some missions just kick your ass, it all depends on uh, 
how you've configured your uh, mecha and uh, hey. playstyle, your loadouts and all that stuff. Load. I know it would never happen because of how Capcom is with their franchises, but I'd kind of sort of want to see FromSoft develop a Devil May Cry game. Mm. Yeah, you don't see um, too many Capcom franchises being farmed out to other de Usually they're the ones developing somebody else's thing. Yeah. I'm gonna go play a game. See you later. Alright, we'll see you, Alice. See you later. Um, like, you know, they did, a, they did a couple of Zeldas and whatnot, but... Hey, wow, I got away from the Dark Slimes. That's nice. Maybe, maybe what... Uh, more realistically, that could be like a crossover game, right? Because like, they are into crossovers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just that people, even though they're very different types of games, people always think about how, you know, both Devil May Cry and FromSoft's games are notorious for being difficult. In totally different ways, though, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I would. I won't say that, you know, one is fair and one isn't, because it's not true. They actually are both fair. Yeah, I think they're both. I, I think it's just completely different approaches to, like, one is, like, you know, I think more about memorizations and patterns and, and leveling up, and the other is reflexes, you know? Yeah. All right, let's I mean, see what we got here. We put two, two, two blades and a hunk of cheese, and I get a blizzard blade. Okay. <laughs> That makes sense. It, it, well, I mean, it's a cold cheese, so there's that. Okay, so the next thing is I need a premium mold, which the only issue is I don't really know what that looks like off the top of my head. Premium mold. What? To me, I think all mold is the same, but oh, here it is. And I need a dragon dung, which, I mean, I suppose... Dragon's got to take a shit, too. Is that it? Yep. And the super spicy cheese. Let's see. Super spicy cheese. Super spicy cheese. I must have. Ghost is that it? There it is. Ghost pepper flakes. <laughs> super spicy cheese. So we're going to make a flaming red hot something, I think. I mean, I don't know what I'm... It's probably going to be an item, because it's mold cheese and actual shit. So I don't think I'm gonna get like a weapon or a piece of armor out of it. I wonder if they clean out the alchemy pot after each use. You know? I hope so. I mean like Trode's in charge of it so you think like he's like don't you dare put that in there we just had dragon dung we need to clean it out otherwise all our items are going to smell like dragon dung. You ninny. 138? Another way that... Oh, Devil May Cry is different from FromSoft games. Aside from the fact that FromSoft games are probably closer to RPGs. Oh, yeah. Which is... Whereas, you know, Devil May Cry is a hack and slash. Yep. But you can button mash your way through those games. There we go. You won't... It'll be harder if you do it that way, but you can do it. Yeah, whereas there's no button mashing your way through Dark Souls. Yeah. Which, I've been told that Sekiro is by far the hardest from soft game you started on, like, the worst one. It definitely seemed like it was completely unforgiving, not so much in the enemy being difficult, but in the exact timing that you needed to parry things. Yeah. And look at that, we hit level 47. There we go. Alright. I mean, I did like it. I just felt like it wasn't a proper stream game. Yeah. Because I'll I'll throw myself at a wall of difficulty for quite a long time on my own time. But I start to think, damn, is this entertaining for people? If I'm streaming it or recording it, you know? So I think, like, damn, people don't want to watch this. And the kind of people that do want to watch that, I don't necessarily like. You know, the people that want to see you fail, right? Right. The death counter people. Yep. Now, somebody tried to do a death counter in chat in one game. I forgot what it was, but it, I, I remember... I think you, EB, might have said, like, yeah, don't do that. 
Yeah, I think it was a Tampon Tuesday game. Yeah, Maybe it, like uh, Hollow Knight or something. Yeah, it was more recent than that. Uh, but yeah. if I look back at the, because since you're thinking it's Tampon Tuesday, if I look back at the um, what we did, like it wasn't Axiom Verge two. Was uh, it? Met no, it wasn't Metroid Dread. It certainly wouldn't have been Metroid Dread. Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't think it was definitely not Rogue Legacy two, right? Or was no. it? I mean, I think that game has its own death counter and that. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You know, what was yeah, before? What was before? Ender Lilies, uh, maybe. Yeah, I'm. I didn't die that much in Ender Lilies, though. Like it had to have been something that I was dying in, right? Yeah. Like I, I don't know. I thought Ender Lilies wasn't even that hard. It was a great game, though. I'd love to play it again. Uh, what was before Ender Lilies? Maybe I'm wrong about it being a Tuesday game. You know, I'm I'm starting to think that it was it was one of the Rogue Legacies. That it was like on the final boss or something. But I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. The Drake, who was like really into Axiom Verge 2, was actually shocked that I beat the last boss in one shot, and I'm just like that you know. It wasn't hard, <laughs> you know. There, there was no point of Axiom Verge two that was difficult. Oh, it was. You I just was get ask, but stuck, but that's about it. Yeah. It was east that before you ran to the final boss, you ran to a super boss. So after that. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Because. <laughs> well, that's sort of like Bahamut Lagoon. Had we had that one battle that kicked my ass, and. Yeah. I looked it up, and people were saying that's the hardest part of the whole game. And I think, well, if I get past that, everything after is gravy. And hey, let's see what my uh, shitty cheese mold made. Scorching cheese. Look, it's got spikes on it. Damn. That, I don't know. Would you eat that knowing that it was made with dragon shit? <laughs> don't feed that to your mouse. Okay, so the next thing is sort of the opposite. I need another premium mold. Wait, was that it? No, that's water weed mold. Uh, where, uh, premium mold, premium mold. Was... Premium mold, premium mold, premium mold. One of the book God. reviewers I watch on YouTube was talking about Akira Toriyama, and I'll admit I never thought about him as a writer. I you know, mostly think about him as an artist. Wait, but right. he did, you know, write the Dragon Ball series. Yeah, he wrote stuff. comics. Yeah. Oh, here's the pre okay, premium mold. I need another dragon dung. Gross. There it is. And the last thing is the cold cheese. There. No, wait. That's cool cheese. I need cold cheese. It needs to be lower temperature than that cheese. But he talked yeah. about like. There we go. The Dragon Ball series. The strength isn't in that. You know, they have really long arcs that. You know, show a lot of development and stuff. It's that they just have a lot of things going on at once, mm. so you're not bored. Which I beg to differ. I got yeah. I was gonna say, I, I don't know. Somebody tried to back when I was in college, try to show me the the Dragon Ball Z anime, and I was just like, I found it dull. It's like I'm fairly certain that each episode is like 80% stock footage. So it's a lot of it, yelling. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot I, of them. I, I'm more powerful I, than you. No, I am more powerful than you. It's like um, I remember watching a DBZ way back in the day when I was a kid, and then I kind of fell out of it after I turned twelve. But it was like it almost created something resembling a time warp because I swear, you, you start watching an episode and it feels like it's over in five minutes, but. No, no, it was like the full <laughs> 25 to 30. Yeah, it, there's not much content there, huh? It's, it's just, it's a lot of them just boasting. Riddle's a fan of Dragon Ball, and they said that the show Dragon Ball Kai is apparently basically Dragon Ball Z if you cut out all of the filler and bullshit. Wait, so it's like five minutes long? Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> it's Dragon Ball Z abridged. Basically. There we go. Which. The funniest thing about that is the only reason why Akira Toriyama started making Dragon Ball again is because 
the live action Dragon Ball movie was so bad, he refused to let that be the last Dragon Ball thing that was oh. ever made. He's like, it can't end like this. Yeah. Because by that point, he's retired from Dragon Ball, and he's like, no, that's not going to be the last Dragon Ball <laughs> thing ever made. That's fine. Right there, Yangus is level 48. I'll just do that. I'm kind of interested in what he looks like. I've never seen him. Akira Toriyama, is, he's a very nerdy looking dude, and he does not look nearly as old as he is. Yeah, I'm seeing both those things now. He's yeah, 67. Yeah, that's an interesting Asian stereotype yeah. that they just don't age. <laughs> well, he's got the big square rim glasses, you know. <laughs> and, and the big. He's always smiling every picture you see of him. He's, yeah, he's got that great big yeah. grin. But look, I mean, look at look at Masahiro Sakurai. The dude looks like he, he's in his twenties. Yeah, I was gonna say, dude looks like he's younger than me, and he's like in his late fifties, yeah. if not his sixties. <laughs> he's got to dye his hair, though, right? Who knows? I know Hitomi was like we were talking about that at once. She was, yeah, that's just how we Japanese people are. We don't age until we're old, then suddenly we age all at once, so we're tiny and we're cute. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> she showed me a meme of that once that showed a Japanese woman at age 20, and then at age 40, exactly the same, and then at age 60, exactly the same, and then at age 80, it was like this tiny little old lady. <laughs> you know, all hunched over with a smile, you know. It's like, that's just... The bonus that when we finally age, we still look adorable. <laughs> hey, that was a quick one too. All right, so this is our shitty cold cheese, and we got c, -c cold cheese. Okay, so the next thing we need another another premium mold. So premium mold, premium mold. Uh, I should be able to find it. It's like 50 different colors. There it is. And fresh milk. That's probably me closer to the beginning. Fresh milk, fresh milk. Dude, I, I must have like 40 fresh milks. There they are, 31. I was close. An Amor Seco Essence, which is many of the nondescript blue bottles that I have. Not that one. That one. Sweet. And at the end, we, we stick the scorching cheese and the cooked cold cheese in. <laughs> yeah, so we're at 42 minutes, but I decided I want to make this episode as long as it needs to be. Because the only thing after this is 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 the last boss. I mean, there, there's stuff after the last boss. There's quite a long ending in this post-game, but yeah. Right now, we're final prep. We've got prep time like we're Batman. <laughs> <laughs> and... Vampire Survivors, almost everything is a reference to another video game, especially Castlevania. It's video games the game. Basically. But I got the fully upgraded version of the whip and it's called the Bloody Tear. Ah, Bloody Tears. Also, one of the relics that you can get is called Great Gospel. Guess I'm fighting one. And the if you don't want to find it, the secret code that you can put in to unlock it is I can hear the cries of Captain Planet. <laughs> That's so dumb. I love it. I unlocked it normally. It took me a while, but when I saw the secret uh, code for it, I had to laugh at that. Because I already knew it was a Final Fantasy VII reference. <laughs> That's why I like, um, since you mentioned Castlevania, I like the, the Lords of Shadow trilogy because it was like a love letter to everything that the series was. And it was so wild to hear the silly little references that and then that they made and then have Sir Patrick Stewart say these lines, you know? Because he, <laughs> he played death. And I remember one of the lines was, Carmilla, you will cry bloody tears when this is over. Um, I was seeing a list of so people suggesting games that you should play or get instead of the shitty wizard game. Mm -hmm. And most of them are kind of, you know, thematically similar. And then all of a sudden somebody was like, Castlevania Order of Ecclesia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I mean, it's a good game, but... Well, I mean, if you think about it, 
it is an interesting choice because you, you cannot. You, she doesn't get any weapons. You know, you she can only equip spells to her two hands, and some of the spells are what appear to be weapons, but she's literally summoning them out of thin air and then they disappear after the animation. So, you know, you're basically playing a, a witch. Right. So it, you know, it, it's certainly not that off as you might think to say Castlevania Order of Ecclesia instead of shitty wizard game. Like a lot of people were saying Elden Ring because it's open world, actually has decent graphics, has a good magic system. Has more than two enemies. Oh, yep. You can do a lot. Know. You can do a lot with limited enemy types. Like Bioshock basically has two types of enemies. Right. But the big daddies. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different types of splicers, and they all behave differently. But it makes sense with something like Harry Potter, or, or whatever the Wizarding World, whatever the fuck they they're calling it now. Um. You can go in a million different directions with enemies, you know? Yeah. And Angela level. I think I have to go back to a town and punish my magic. People even pointed out that, you know, the one thing J.K. Rowling did was she populated this magical world with, like, tons of, you know, monsters and creatures that are, you know, not quite sapient. They could have easily had, you know, your wizard run into any number of these monsters, but no. You can find dark wizards and probably the uplands. I didn't know what the enemies were. Uh -huh. So, you, you, did you send a, you said you uh, were thinking of it. I don't know if you did send a message to Raven on Instagram. Yeah, I did. Honestly, I went back to the VOD and looked at, like, when you came in and said that and her reaction, and I was just like, wow, cold. It was. That's what bothered me the most. Yeah, that's just, like, talk about I don't give a fuck. Well, I kind of, like, want to go back and just play the game. <laughs> just be petty. Yeah. It's not going to stop her from streaming it. It's like, and you know what the thing that hurts most is? I'm not going to... Well, actually, yes, I will. It's like... It's like, and after all of this, Professor Fig dies and it turns <laughs> out we go to Curse Dan. Oh, that's funny. I don't even know who any of these people are. I just know those are the spoilers that really was... Well, you know... Sharing. Apparently, that's another issue with the game, is that um, despite the illusion of several different choices and everything, there is really just one ending. Yeah. Oh, well, I told you flat out that EG has only one ending, but how you get there is what yeah. changes. Yeah. But they had specifically marketed it as something where you're, there's a morality to it, and your choices matter, and there's different endings, and there really is not. That's another thing they talked about morality is like you go around casting thing, you yeah, know, you one of the forbidden spells on NPCs left and right, no one yeah. cares. They they gasp in horror and but but there's no consequence. And yeah. it doesn't change your ending at all. So I was reading another review where they were basically like I, I tried to play this as a villain and it just gave me the happy ending. Like it didn't impose any sort of consequence on me and I made every evil choice that I could. I mean, Probably it's... because it's hard to tell what's good and evil in a game where you're, you know, yeah. fighting against Jewish analogs because they have the gall to want rights. Especially with the revelation that they were framed for all the things that they were supposedly doing wrong. Yeah. So, yeah, Which no. kind of makes you having, you know, goblin heads mounted in your room a little more uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Yes, it's a real thing in the game. I didn't know that. That's fucked up. You can also get your own house elf, so you can get your own slave, too. Oh, damn. That's... Oh, hello. That's fucked up, though. Which that really fucking long video essay that I did sit through because I was playing Vampire Survivor at the same time, um, brought up that she has to guess that at some point in the wizard's past, because of how powerful the magic uh, house elves are capable of and been shown that wizards must have somehow like brainwashed them into being subservient. Hey, them. Moogle. Yeah, they subjugated them somehow, right? Yeah, like we've seen that they have, you know, memory and mind influencing Good magic. Hi, Moogle. 
<laughs> hey. Never mind letting Eevee finish, just go ahead. <laughs> you were saying, Eevee? That's just like, talk about, you know, they have all these mind control things and stuff that they talk about, yeah. and then, you know, yeah. what if they use those on the house elves at some point in the past, now they all are born with that compulsion, and for whatever reason, Dobby wasn't. And they mention that, you know, once every generation or so, that'll happen. Like, there's always one weirdo every generation or so, and it's like... Would have been interesting to see, you know, where he took that, except for they killed him off. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. This stupid slime doesn't want to die. These guys are assholes. Yeah, but I have the power of save states. Safe states wreck these guys. Yeah. That's the most potent ability to use against a King Metal Slime. Yeah. There we go. I'm wishing Yangus would just kill the motherfucker already. Ugh. Yeah, I'm unpacking these uh, ceiling lights, and certain parts of them have like the overwhelm this overwhelming smell to them that. It has very strongly reminiscent of weed, so I gotta wonder if they were smoking anything really? with packing bees. Huh. That's an interesting... Wow, they had to have been, right? <laughs> well, I tell people that when I worked at Toys R Us, they literally locked us in there because it was an overnight shift. So, the only way to smoke was to go out to the back where they had all the stock, and it was generally accepted that you weren't supposed to do that, but... The people in charge were like, we know people steer smoke, but we don't want to know how they're doing it, because yeah. then we, that put a stop to it. So, Oop. that's why, you know, all the toys smelled like smoke at that <laughs> Toys R Us, because we were all smoking oh, back there. gross. Okay, so this is the, the mold, the milk, and the water thing. Cured cheese! Okay. Alright, hey, so... That our way to cure cheese. That's not the only way to get cured cheese, it's just another way of doing it in this game. Uh, let's see, so the next thing I need, well I need fr fresh milk. And I need the premium mold again. Did I just see it? No, it's the slime crown. Just looking for whatever is colorful. There it is. And Yggdrasil do, which is right here. Using up a valuable Yggdrasil do for this. I was reading this thing on Quora about uh, somebody... It, it was a, it, sort of like the situation you just described, Evie, but worse. In that it was people who were told that they couldn't leave until everything was done, right? Yeah. And they locked them in. And, you know, eventually there were people who were like, hey, I gotta go because my kid, or I gotta go because, you know. And they were let out, but this one guy was like, you know, he stuck around until it was like really late. And he said, I have to go because I have another job that I have to be at. And the guy was like, no, because you don't have kids or anything, you have to stay. And uh, and he said, no, I'm leaving. And he's like, well, I'm not letting you leave. And he says, all right, well, you have a choice. Uh, you could let me leave, or I could call the police. So he told him he was fired for leaving without permission, right? But then he went back the next day and told the, um, like, you know, I guess like HR or whatever, and it was the, the manager that actually got in trouble. But... Um, I think there was something where uh, he kept getting harassed by them. And eventually he said, look, if you don't stop bothering me, I'm going to have you charged for kidnapping. And then they, they stopped real fast. <laughs> mm. Sort of like Elon and Elsa, he wants to put beds in both Twitter and Tesla offices so he can plug them. Yeah. Work like to stay there, which is, some, you know, Japanese work culture shit, which we all know. Uh huh. It's toxic. Yep. Certain people are literally killing themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My Not uh... only is that common, there is literally a word specifically to refer to the act of a worker committing suicide because they're overworked. And it's yep. called Kuroshi. Um, my uncle worked for. Um... Bank of Japan, in here in America, but he worked for Bank of Japan, and so he had a lot of Japanese co-workers, right? And 
he found that, like, he was like a team lead or some shit, right? And they actually asked him at one point, like, his bosses were like, how is it that your team always has, like, the best numbers and, you know, they're, they're always performing. They're like, what are you doing differently that we can emulate? Because we, we don't know, right? And he said, well, they get more time off, they get more breaks, they're more well-rested, and that makes them work better. And he said it was like their eyes glazed over, like they just didn't understand because the culture is so much just work harder, stupid. Yeah. He, he didn't understand how not working could help productivity. Oh. Oh, you still saw the story? No, I was done. Um, in one of the Pokemon games, I know all of them have kind of like the, maybe with the exception of Gen 1, has kind of like a developer room where you can go in and talk mm -hmm. to like a few of the people. There was one in Gen yeah. 1. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say Gen 1 has one. They so, all do. In one of them, I want to say it was Gen 6, when you find it. They specifically talk about the fact that while working on the game, they slept at the office a lot and comment on like the beds were actually kind of comfortable. Yeah, because to them that's like a badge of honor. Like, oh, yeah. I, I overworked myself, you know. And, and and when my uncle, you know, my uncle had his more American sensibilities in the team, and he was giving them more time off and more rest, and they literally just couldn't understand. Like, how could that lead to better results? We don't get. And they were like, No, it can't be that. What? What is it really? And you know, well, that's it. That's what it is. And I think the end result was they basically just didn't believe him. That sounds about right. Insane. <laughs> Jesus, Mogul. So you got like so much reverb over there that you like you like clear your throat, and it sounds like uh, the band tuning their instruments at the beginning of a concert. <laughs> Is there like a fan blowing on you or something? Yeah, there's a fan on. It's February, and you got a fan on. You are a wild, wild person. I've got a fan on and my window open. Yeah, well, you, <laughs> you're in that unique uh, right above the laundry room situation where it's always hot. Yeah. Hey. Plus, ever since I started tea, I'm just always hot, too. <laughs> you're like, look at me, I'm hot. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> we're at 57 minutes in this, but we're having fun. We can go to the next boss in the next video. The last boss, rather, not the next boss. Well, he is the next boss. He's also the last boss. Wow. Yeah. What's interesting though, there there is quite a robust post game. It's really just challenge dungeons, but it's, it's you know it's difficult and whatnot. But then to get the true ending, you have to go back and beat the regular last boss. Nice. Oh, I think I heard it. Uh, let's see. It was right when Moogle was talking. So here we go. Angel cheese. Very cool. So, uh, in mid-April, I'm oh. going to be traveling again. I'm going to take a week off, and I've decided I'm going to go to go back to Hawaii. This time, go to Hawaii. the, the Hawaii. 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 Nice. We yeah. expect lots of lots of pictures then. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then for our final, at least for now, our final thing, we're going to put the scorching cheese and the c, c cold cheese in. In. And this is this will be our fun. I swear, if I get a highly strung cheese out of this, I'm gonna be angry about it. Dude, one of my friends just came back from Hawaii with her fiance. What was is because she's a doctor, she could sign up for all these seminars and stuff. And oh she yeah. She signed up for one in Hawaii, so they would pay for everything and. Nice. You know, all she has to do is sit through the seminars for a couple of hours each day, and then she's got the rest of the time to herself to do whatever she wants. It's like when you go to those timeshare things, knowing what it is, but just because you want to, you know, like a day off. <laughs> Me and Brandon did that once. Did I ever tell you that story? <laughs> no, you didn't. No. We, I, I got invited to this. It, it, it wound up being a whole mess, but we, I got invited to this timeshare thing at a resort not too far from here, right? Right in the Poconos. And I, I called Brandon, well, let's go to this timeshare thing, right? And Brennan's like, oh, why do we want to do that? I was like, well, first of all, it would be funny if we could fuck with them, right? Because we're not going to, like, buy a fucking timeshare, right? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Even if we had the money, it's a stupid idea, you know? You always get screwed. They're bad contracts. 
And I'm realizing that I sound like Coach McGurk right now, and I don't even care. <laughs> but, um... And I was like, plus, they're gonna give us a whole bunch of free crap. Right? So, we we go there. It was like, I suppose like a half hour from my house, right? And we have this, this saleswoman who um, I can best describe as... She had amazing cleavage. That was the impression <laughs> I got from her, right? And she was definitely using that as her sales technique, right? And, you know, we went all, all over this place and all over this, you know, like, looked at all the stuff and everything. And, you know, we were messing with her and she was messing with us back, right? And then it was like, would you like coffee? And this is where it becomes funny. Because I was like, hell yeah, I want coffee. Because it was kind of early, right? I think we had, like, a... It was like 8 a.m. thing, right? And Brandon's all like, I don't drink coffee, but what the fuck, right? I'll try. I'll learn, okay. right? So she brings us to the room, and it was like, just, just, just whatever you want, right? And there were three pots of coffee, and, uh, you know, Brandon, not knowing anything about coffee, is like, okay, I know the black one is regular coffee. And the orange one is decaf, but what's this one with the brown handle? And I'm like, you know, I I don't know. So I I take it, the pot, and I hold it up to my face, and I smell it, and I go, oh, this is espresso. Uh. <laughs> so then I pour myself a nice 20 ounce espresso. Oh God. Oh boy. And I'm yeah. And I'm drinking it, and I start talking really fast, and I'm like, pr I'm practically vibrating, you guys. I'm like, oh, yeah. and then there's this thing over there, and this guy over there, and 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 Brendan's like, whoa, I gotta try this shit. And then he, he, who is not used to coffee, pours himself a 20 ounce espresso with like 15 sugars, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, just, and then he, yet. and then he's doing this thing like. Tell me when I t tell me when I start talking really fast, dude. You're talking fast now. I'm talking fast. You're talking hella fast. Oh my god, I'm talking fast. It was it was like a fucking freaky world. Fast, yeah, freaky fast, freaky fast. Yeah, no, like Jim Jones. Yeah, it's like fast, freaky fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like that. He's like, tell me when I start talking fast. You're talking fast right now. I am. That's amazing. I can't even tell I'm talking fast. You're vibrating. I'm vibrating. You know, it was it was really funny. And then the the, the woman comes back and we're like, hello, you know, like we're just jabbering really fast. And she's like, oh my god, you guys are <laughs> maniacs. Oh. So. Yeah, and then, and then so then she tries to make the sale, and we're like, nah, we just came here for the free shit. <laughs> and she's like, well, she she just had this look on her face, like I knew it, <laughs> you know, like that's fine, we get that all the time. Last time I had coffee with a shot of espresso in it, I didn't know there was espresso in it, mm. and I was pretty much vibrating out of existence. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that I was before I gave up caffeine. If I tried it now, I, my heart would probably. I mean, I, I I drink a cup of espresso and sometimes two cups of espresso every morning. I'm used to it, but this was one of those huge sort of Dunkin' Donuts fuck off cups. And then Brandon <laughs> never had coffee before I was drinking. All right, let's see what we got here. Wow, um, that is just funny. I've got a cup or two of a. Uh... Death Wish coffee every single day, so I'm pretty much used to that kind of level. Yeah. I'm gonna try that. So all that to make a cook a cold cheese and a whatever the hell the spicy one was called, and you mix them together and you get normal regular cheese. That's actually low key funny. Like I'm, <laughs> I was if it was another highly strung cheese, I was gonna be mad about it, but the fact that it was just just okay, you you perfectly annihilated them and now it's just cheese <laughs> alright guys well we're gonna stop right here I'll see you guys real soon with more Dragon Quest 8 where we will be fighting Rapthorn